Imagine a world where the greatest civilization has just crumbled, its echoes of unparalleled might and magic now silenced in the ashes of history. This is not a mere fantasy, but the stark reality of Essos following the cataclysm known as the Doom of Valeria. In the world of Game of Thrones, this event marks the beginning of a dark and tumultuous era known as the Century of Blood a time when the very fabric of civilization was torn apart, leaving a power vacuum that plunged the continent into a maelstrom of chaos, war, and despair. The Century of Blood stands as a monumental period in the lore of Game of Thrones, a hundred years of relentless conflict, political upheaval, and societal transformation that followed the sudden and mysterious destruction of Valeria, once the pinnacle of magical and political power. With the fall of this mighty empire, the cities, peoples, and cultures of Essos were left to fend for themselves in a new world order, one where the old rules no longer applied, and the struggle for dominance became a matter of survival. Join us as we delve into the heart of this tumultuous era, exploring the historic battles, the rise and fall of would-be empires, and the indelible marks left on the lands and peoples of Essos. Through this journey, we'll uncover the stories of valor and treachery, of legendary figures and forgotten souls, all woven together in the rich tapestry of Game of Thrones history. Prepare to embark on an exploration of the Century of Blood, where every moment is a fight for legacy, power, and survival in the shadow of lost Valeria. The Prelude, Essos Before the Doom Before the shadow of calamity fell upon it, Essos was a tapestry of wonder, the cradle of civilization where the symphony of human achievement reached its crescendo. This vast continent, sprawling and diverse, was a mosaic of cultures, each thread of history and tradition weaving into an intricate pattern of unparalleled beauty. At its heart was Valeria, the shining jewel of the world, a city where magic and technology intertwined in sublime harmony, giving rise to wonders that would echo through the ages. Valeria was more than a city. It was a testament to the zenith of human potential, where dragon lords soared the skies, their dragon's flames a symbol of their unassailable might. It was here that the art of forging Valerian steel was perfected, creating blades that would become the stuff of legend. The Valerian's dominion extended far and wide, their influence shaping the destinies of countless peoples and lands across Essos. Yet, for all its grandeur, Valeria's light would not last. The doom a catastrophe of apocalyptic proportions struck without warning, a cataclysm of fire and magic that engulfed the city in a single dreadful hour. The skies darkened, the earth shattered, and the seas boiled as Valeria was consumed by the very powers that had built it. In an instant, the greatest civilization known to the world was reduced to ruins, its wisdom, might, and magic vanishing into the smoke and ash of its own destruction. This unprecedented disaster set the stage for the Century of Blood, a time when the remnants of a shattered world struggled to fill the void left by Valeria's fall. The ensuing chaos would reshape Essos forever, a new epoch born from the ashes of the old, where the only certainty was uncertainty, and the legacy of Valeria haunted the dreams of those who dared to envision a future amidst the ruins. The Century of Blood, an era of chaos. In the aftermath of the doom, the once unassailable Valerian freehold lay in ruins, its dominion shattered, and its legacy reduced to smoldering rubble. This catastrophic event heralded the onset of the Century of Blood, a period marked by anarchy, conflict, and the relentless ambition of those eager to fill the power vacuum that Valeria's fall had created. As the remnants of the Freehold's influence waned, Essos became a battleground for supremacy, its vast landscapes witnessing the rise and fall of would-be conquerors and the relentless clash of emerging powers. Among the first to assert dominance in this new era was Orion, a dragon lord claiming descent from Valeria. Proclaiming himself the Emperor of Valeria, he gathered an army of 30,000, envisioning a realm reborn from the ashes. Yet ambition alone could not tame the chaos. His grand expedition ventured into the heart of the devastated lands, only to vanish, swallowed by the same mysterious forces that had obliterated the Valerian Empire. Orion's fate served as a grim reminder of the world's newfound unpredictability, where the promise of power was often just an illusion, leading only to oblivion. Meanwhile, the city of Volantes, one of the oldest and most powerful of the Valerian colonies, saw the vacuum as an opportunity to establish its hegemony. The Volantine elite, driven by visions of grandeur, sought to inherit Valeria's mantle, attempting to bring the disparate cities and territories under their control. They extended their reach aggressively, subjugating neighboring cities, and asserting their will with a mix of diplomatic cunning and military might. But such ambition sparked resistance, 
fueling fires of defiance that threatened to engulf the region in perpetual strife. The chaos of the era was not confined to the machinations of emperors and oligarchs. The Dothraki, fierce nomadic warriors of the Central Plains, seized the opportunity to expand their raids, emboldened by the disarray. With no central authority to oppose them, they swept across the continent with unprecedented ferocity, their thundering hordes sacking cities and towns, leaving desolation in their wake. The once feared name of Valeria, which had kept them at bay, was now just a whispered legend, and the Dothraki reveled in the newfound freedom to roam and conquer. The century of blood was a time of relentless turmoil, a crucible in which the fate of Essos was forged anew. It was an era that tested the resilience of its peoples, reshaping borders, allegiances, and identities. The power vacuum left in the wake of Valeria's fall created a world where only the strongest, the most cunning, or the most ruthless could aspire to thrive. The legacies of this chaotic century would echo through the ages, a stark reminder of the fragile balance that once governed the mightiest of civilizations and the enduring impact of their downfall. Valeria's Children at War in the chaotic aftermath of Valeria's catastrophic fall, its erstwhile colonies, now known as the Free Cities, emerged as the primary contenders vying for dominance over the fragmented realms. These successor states, each harboring ambitions of filling the void left by their former overlord, plunged into a series of relentless conflicts that would come to characterize the era known as the Century of Blood. The power struggles were not just battles for territorial control, but also a fight for the legacy of Valeria, as each city sought to assert its supremacy and vision for the future. Among the most prominent of these successor states was Volantes, the first and mightiest of the free cities, which quickly attempted to position itself as the heir apparent to the Valerian Empire. Armed with a powerful fleet and a considerable army, Volantes sought to reunite the disparate Valerian colonies under its banner, launching ambitious campaigns to subjugate its neighbors. The Volantines laid claim to Mur and Lies, enforcing their rule for a time, and even dared to extend their influence over the distant territories of the Roinar. However, the imperial ambitions of Volantes were met with fierce resistance. The city of Tyrosh, bolstered by its strategic location and military prowess, became a formidable adversary, challenging Volantine supremacy and forming alliances with other cities like Pentos and Kohar. These alliances, forged in the fires of shared adversity, were pivotal in destabilizing the Volantine campaigns, leading to protracted conflicts that drained resources and weakened the contenders. Amidst these turbulent times, the Targaryens, a noble family of Valerian descent residing on Dragonstone, remained conspicuously aloof from the mainland conflicts. Yet, their influence was palpable, as their possession of dragons, a potent symbol of the lost Valerian, might cast a long shadow over the power dynamics in Essos. While they did not actively seek to conquer the free cities, the mere threat of their involvement was a significant deterrent to Volantes' expansionist policies. The conflicts among Valeria's children were not mere skirmishes but extensive, protracted wars that reshaped the political landscape of Essos. These wars were marked by shifting alliances, betrayals, and the rise and fall of would-be emperors and kings. The legacy of Valeria, embodied in its surviving customs, languages, and most importantly, dragons, continued to influence the strategies and identities of the warring factions, perpetuating a cycle of conflict and ambition that would eventually define the history of the continent in the centuries to come. The Rise of the Elephants A New Power in Volantes In the turbulent epoch following the doom of Valeria, Volantes found itself at a critical juncture. The initial post-Doom years were dominated by the Tigers, a faction within Volantes driven by militaristic zeal and the ambition to restore the Valerian Freehold's former glory. Their aggressive campaigns of expansion and conquest, however, met with limited success and substantial resistance, ultimately proving unsustainable. As the dust of relentless conflicts settled, the power dynamics within Volantes underwent a transformative shift, heralding the rise of the Elephants, a faction characterized by their mercantile ethos and pragmatic governance. The Elephants, comprising mainly of wealthy merchants and influential traders, envisioned a different path for Volantes. They recognized the futility of endless warfare and the potential of economic power as a means of establishing dominance. Under their leadership, Volantes pivoted from its aggressive, expansionist military campaigns to a strategy centered on economic supremacy and diplomatic influence. This marked a significant departure from the previous era's relentless conquests, steering the city towards prosperity through trade and commerce. 
This strategic shift had profound implications for Volantes and its influence in the wider Asosi landscape. The elephants fostered an environment where wealth and trade networks became the new instruments of power. They expanded the city's trading connections, establishing Volantes as a crucial hub in the network of maritime and overland trade routes that crisscrossed the known world. Their rule ushered in an era of relative peace and economic prosperity, with the city's markets, ports, and warehouses bustling with activity, attracting merchants, entrepreneurs, and craftsmen from across the globe. Moreover, the elephant's emphasis on commerce over conquest led to a renaissance in diplomatic and cultural exchanges. They cultivated alliances and fostered relationships with other cities and powerful entities, leveraging their economic might to secure political influence without resorting to the direct military intervention characteristic of the tiger's rule. This approach not only solidified Volantes' standing, but also contributed to a more stable and interconnected Asosi continent, where power was increasingly measured by wealth and diplomatic acumen, rather than military might alone. However, the ascendancy of the elephants also had its critics. Some viewed their commercial focus as a departure from the noble ideals and martial prowess of old Valeria, arguing that it prioritized profit over honor and legacy. Despite such criticisms, the pragmatic governance of the elephants undeniably transformed Volantes, steering it away from the shadow of perpetual war and towards a future where commerce and diplomacy held sway. The Legacy of the Century of Blood The Century of Blood, a tumultuous epoch marked by chaos and conflict, left an indelible imprint on the continent of Essos, shaping its geopolitical, social, and cultural landscapes for generations to come. The era, characterized by the absence of a unifying power akin to Valeria, unraveled a new world order, where the balance of power was perpetually in flux, and the sovereignty of states was incessantly contested. The disputed lands, a region emblematic of the era's enduring strife, continued to be a battleground long after the century had passed. Here, the legacy of the century of blood was most palpable, with mercenary companies and ambitious city-states vying for control, their conflicts fueled by ancient grievances and the relentless ambition to dominate. This relentless warfare not only perpetuated a cycle of violence and retaliation, but also stymied the region's potential for stability and prosperity, leaving it fraught with turmoil and discord. Culturally, the century of blood catalyzed significant shifts across Essos, it fragmented the once cohesive tapestry of Valerian culture, leading to the diversification of identities, languages, and traditions. As the influence of Valeria waned, regional cultures flourished, giving rise to a rich mosaic of customs and beliefs that enriched the continent's cultural heritage. However, this cultural flourishing came with its own challenges, as the loss of a common Valerian identity sometimes exacerbated divisions and fostered parochialism. The period's end marked the dawn of a new era, yet the shadow of the past lingered, serving as a stark reminder of the chaos that can ensue in the absence of a stabilizing authority. The power vacuum left by Valeria's fall underscored the fragility of civilizations and the impermanence of empires, highlighting the inherent unpredictability of history and the perennial struggle for power and dominion. The Century of Blood, a pivotal chapter in the annals of Game of Thrones lore, was more than a mere historical period. It was a crucible that forged the destiny of Essos, leaving lessons that resonate through the ages. It reminds us that the past, while gone, is never truly dead. It echoes in the present, shaping the world in unseen ways, and teaching us that the future is built on the foundations of history. As we reflect on the tumultuous events of this era, we are reminded of the cyclical nature of history, where power rises and falls, and the legacies of the past continue to influence the future. The Century of Blood serves as a cautionary tale of what can transpire when the structures of power collapse, leaving a void that ushers in an era of uncertainty and strife. We invite you to ponder the lessons of the Century of Blood, to explore its impact on the world of Game of Thrones, and to consider how its echoes can still be felt in the series' unfolding drama. Subscribe to our channel, like this video, and share your thoughts in the comments below. What insights do you think the Century of Blood offers for our understanding of power, legacy, and the human condition?